then we lift up on this sentence. Do you remember how to read this word? Mm, I know it's magic rock. Yeah, well, this is roji, which means alleyway. Roji wa mm. kuroyami, which is the alleyway is completely dark. Um, can you read this sentence for me? Konto. Nani kore? We got you, and then we have Konto. this word right here. This guy means thief. You know what thief is in Japanese? Good guess. Dorobo. Kanto you dorobo. Do you know what this means? Kanto you dorobo. Kan is a thief. Yes, it is basically saying that. Literally, what this toy you is used for is for defining things. So it's kind of more like con equals thief almost. So con is defined as a thief. The way it works is that you get mm. something small, like a small word, like a name, and you're defining it as something that fits under a bigger category. So con is a thief. Um, could you read this sentence for me? Kiri ga nagare komu komu. Uh, dorobo. This is no, roji. Anyway. Yep. Roji. Hi. Roji wa matsu. Yami. Oyami. Kura. And this suit is a glottal stop. So, kura yami. What does this mean? Do you know? Kura yami. Kiri ga. So the fog, I should start at the end. Fog. Kumu. Kumu is to come. So the fog is coming. Nagare. You're thinking about kuru. Kuru is coming. Komu. Komu is to go into. Mm. The fog is going into Nagare. Nagare sounds familiar. It's like mm -hmm. long. Good guess. Oh, Nagare do is to flow. To flow. So Kiri ga Nagare komu roji is the alleyway that fog flows into. So the alleyway that fog flows into, what what else do we know about it? Makurayami. So the thief, Dorobo. Mm, where did Dorobo come from? Dorobo is not. Ah, it's something with the rope. This is Roji. This is alleyway. Roji. I think I'm going to start Roji. us a little bit. Over. Now we start over here. Phew, nice job. It's been two weeks, so it makes sense. So first off, this word right here starts with doro and ends with bo. Do you have any idea what this word might be? Doro bo. Doro bo is a thief. Yes, this is thief. So doro bo has this little water radical here because thieves are covered in mud. They're they're Hi. muddy and dirty. Dorobo. Um, yo is used when you want to make something into a simile. It's like the word like, which you say she looks like something. Mm. Do you know how to read this word? This is dorobo. Yep, dorobo. Which, what did dorobo mean? Dorobo is a thief. Perfect. Can you read this sentence for me? Majutsushi no yona dorobo. You have any idea what that might mean? So the magician no you. So the magician is defined as a thief. Yep. Majutsushi no yona dorobo. Perfect. Um, so that you think a little bit of toyu for defining 
this is a little bit different. So it does not mean magician equals thief. Do you have a second guess what this might mean? What did I just tell you your means? Is like, like. something that's like. Yes. Hi. So in other words, a thief, here's our main subtopic, is like mm -hmm. a magician. Magician no yona thief, a thief that is like a magician. Um so yona is like, and this is is this a noun? Is it an adjective? What do you think yo is? It is a na adjective. Yep, it is a na adjective. Perfect. So how would you say a thief's bags insides? So we have three nouns right here, all being attached together. Do you know what the glue hmm. between nouns are? Not this guy. Yep, it is no. So how would you say a thief's bags insides? Hmm. Naka no bag. It's like kaban. Yes, kaban Once is bag. In this case, I'm going to use fukuro. But you're right, kaban does mean bag. Kaban feels a little bit more like a purse bag. Fukuro feels more like mm. a rucksack. Like Santa has a kaba, has a fukuro. He doesn't have a kaban. So picture the bag Santa has. Because a thief mm. is not going to have a purse, right? He's going to have like a little like rucksack like thing. So that's why it's fukuro. Yeah. Um, paper bags are also fukuro. That'd be kami fukuro. Things like that. Hi. So, What's next? You want to say a thieves' bags insides? Naka no fukuro no doboro or doroboro. Hi. Doroboro. Okay. So I'm gonna let you know doroboro. what this sentence, what you, what sentence you made. You said a thief of a bags in of of a bag of inside. Hmm. So it kind of feels important. like. Inside of the bag, there's a thief. That's what this feels like. Naka no fukuro no dorobo, which is almost like the insides of a bag has some kind of sentience for some reason and is a thief. So perhaps this could show up in mm. some kind of fantasy world, but that wasn't really what our goal was. So the main thing here, a so, thief's bag insides, we're mostly talking about insides, right? We're talking about the insides hi. of a bag. So that would be fukuro. No naka inside of a bag is fukuro no naka. And then we want to say a thief's bag. Do you think dorobo will be in front of bag or behind bag if we're describing the word bag with the word thief? Hmm. Thief's bag should, should be before bag. Correct. Dorobo no fukuro. No fukuro no naka. So this is fun because it's like you don't normally when you're learning Japanese you have to stack all these nouns together. So it's a little bit like, ah, what are we doing? But basically the way it works is that <laughs> we're talking about naka. It's being described as a fukuro. Which naka are we talking about? The inside of the bag's fu the, the, the bag's fu naka, right? And then we're describing the fukuro oh. as a dorobo's fukuro. So you just kind of build it up that way. Okay, so now that you have this now, I mean, noun clause thing, I want you to make the sentence night like, which is you'll remember, a uh, thieves' bags insides. How do you think you'd say that? So we're talking about a night that's being described mm. as the insides of a thieves' bag. Mm. I'm going to borrow the sentence. Dorobo no fukuro no naka. Mm. Night like. Uh, night is yoru. Yoru. Hmm. Eto. So just so could be the end. Is it much? She no yona. Kuku. So yoru no yona. Doboro no fukuru no naka. This is grammatically correct, what you made, but I'm going to let you know what that means in Japanese. Yoru no yona, mm. dorobo no fukuro no naka. This is the inside of a, of a bag that is like the night. 
So perhaps if I hear this, I would almost picture mm-hmm. the inside of the bag having like a starry collection, perhaps like a nice starry background. Mm. So this is a pretty fancy bag, the sea pack, or perhaps it's a bottomless pit bag that you could that just goes on forever, like the night. Which this is grammatically mm. correct, but we want the opposite, right? So in Japanese, our heads of phrases, that's this is a big word, um, go at the end of the phrase. So if we want to describe night, everything is going to go behind that. If you want to describe naka, then everything be- before it describes a naka. So it's this kind of like very interesting, like uh, these are called heads of phrases in um, linguistics. So I put that right there mm. as I grab my pen. So when we make like a sentence, basically we go, okay, this is our head. So that means this right here is kind of like that. And then we kind of continue having like a little like building up of heads to be describing the previous kind of square. So mm. in English, we kind of do the opposite. We start um, our our sentences with our topic. You know, we got our starting with things. In Japanese, the opposite. We end things normally other than verbs. So verbs go at the end of sentences, but not including the verbs at the end of the sentence everything in Japanese is kind of backwards than it is in English. So that's why a lot of times people say if you're translating, you want to like do like a reading it from the back rather than reading it from the front. And that's because of their relative clauses and adjectives and stuff all work backwards mm. like this. Oh, that makes sense. Um, can you read this word for me? Could I? You know what could I means? Could I? I think last time I said it's either spicy or dark. I'm guessing it's dark. <laughs> you think about hai karai. Hai. So ka rai is spicy. Ku rai mm. is dim or Kurai. hard to see, dark, so. anything like that. And is this an adjective or a noun? It is an e adjective. Yep. And kura, if you look at it, the kanji has a sun in it and the sound. So apparently if the sun makes no sound, it's it's dark. The sun makes a sound. It's dark, kind of, kind of mm. random. I don't, know. I don't know why we have sun in here for, for darkness. Um. So your job is that you're going to be remembering that this kanji with the sun and sound is kura, which is shows up in kurai. Can you read this word? Hi. Ma kurai. Perfect. So the e isn't here anymore. Where? So you can't read it if it's not there. Can you read it again? Ma kura. Perfect. So makura is actually not an e adjective, even though kurai is. It's actually a na adjective. Mm. That's really weird. So when ma, when this suffix gets added to words, it turns into a na adjective. So same with like, you'll see it with colors like ma shiro would be white. So ma shiro na rather than shiroi, which is white. Mm. Ma has a meaning of like completely or super. So makura means super dim, so dark. Or mashiro means completely white. You'll hear mashiro a lot when someone talks about snow, for example. Ah, mashiro na. Mm. As far like totally white, as far as I can see, will be like will show up with that. Or your brain will be mashiro. Can't think of a thing because it's white up there. Okay, so let's go read this sentence, starting with thief. Hi. This is yoru. Yoru is night. So yoru has a little lid right here, a human being, and I don't know what this is, but it looks a lot like ta. Ta-ta! It's nighttime! Yeah, that is yoru. Which, what does yoru mean? Night. Night, yes. So as you see right here, everything has, does, we don't have any particles in here. We don't have a ga, we don't have o in here. Instead, we have a bunch of nos and we mm. have a lot of nas connecting things. So because of that, we're going to start at the end of this with yoru when translating this. So Hi. start here and you literally go backwards. Let's, let's try. What does it say? Yoru na. 
真っ暗。真っ暗。真っ暗 is、ah, okay. 真っ暗ような中の。So the insides like a 真っ暗 which is everything and dim. So everything. let's, let's, I'll, really I'll help bring it. So first off, we have yoru. What does yoru mean? Night. So we got night. Night is being described night. as what? Makura. Makura. Cool. So we got a dim night.、Mm. Then we have yona. What does yona mean? Like. Yeah. So a dim night, like naka. Insides. Like, I'm going to add、uh, the because we need words like that. The insides、mm. of what? Fukuro, which is a bag. Cool. Whose bag? Dorobo. Beep. Yep. Beep. So, in other words, this is a totally dim night, like the insides of a thief's bag.、Mm. So, like in English, we kind of move things around differently. Yeah, it's a night that's been described as dim, and it's also been described as like the insides of a bag. Whose bag? A thief's bag. So. Okay. So, do you know what um, um, dare means? Dare. Dare means who? Perfect. How about nani? Nani is what? Perfect. How about doko? Doko is where. Perfect. So in Japanese, you can add a mo to these words to add either no or every, and how we do this in English. It makes it into a all encompassing word. For example, doko where becomes nowhere or everywhere, depending on the context.、Mm. The context is whatever tense the verb is at the end. So doko、um, ni mo iru. Mean、um, everywhere and doko ni mo、uh, inai would mean nowhere. So negative would be no, positive would be every. Dare and nani. These questions in English, we actually add a special made up word here, which is、um, one and thing. So no who、mm. becomes no one. We don't know, no one does it. Or every who becomes everyone. What does、so, um, nanimo turn into? Nanimo would be so what becomes nothing or,、yep. or everything, depending on context. Exactly. Perfect. How would you say no one in Japanese? No one's here. No one's here. Dare no inai. I assume you meant to say mo. I heard, I heard no, but I, I, I know you probably meant mo because mo's in here. Dari mo i nai is perfect. This is our goal. No one's here. Here is insinuated by context. If you wanted to, you could be specific by saying koko ni. <laughs> Dari mo i nai.、Mm. Uh, but normally, if you're using koko, that's insinuated by context. There's no one here. Dari mo i nai. So this is perfect. Nice. So mo adds every or no. We just make it into an all encompassing version of the question. Do you know what a tori is? Tori sounds like something like tori. Tori. Tori is a road, some kind of street.、Mm, tori.、Mm. Can you read this for me? Tori ni dare mo inai. What does this mean? So, no one is in the location of the road. Exactly. No one's on the road. Perfect. So, in Japanese, wa and ga can mo both mark subjects. And wa is the default subject marker. If wa is marking the subject, this is plain and boring. You're not insinuating anything. You're talking monotone. Dorobo wa iru. There was a thief. You're not telling me anything except for literally what you're saying. Ga,、mm. on the other hand, is dramatic. You're underlining dotable. There is a thief! A thief! You're making it very, you're putting some kind of emphasis on thief. 
What's so. really interesting is that wa and ga is not always like this. Ga is not always a topic marker. Ga only marks topics, only marks important information if ga is marking a subject. Wa mm. and ga can mark not subjects as well. For example, can you read the sentence down here for me? Uh, Hi. So this would mean I love apples. Ringo ga suki. The subject is I. It's been dropped, but that's the subject. I love apples. So ga mm. right here is not marking the subject. Instead, it's marking an object of the sentence. So o marks objects. Mm. So o and ga both mark objects in Japanese. The difference is that ga marks objects like without intent is how I'll describe it. And o marks objects with intent. For example, you didn't decide to like apples. It just kind of happened that apples is something you like. Because if you could have a choice, your favorite food would be um, Brussels sprouts, right? It's healthy. You should make yourself like that. Right. You can't help but like chocolate. I mean, there, there's no helping it. So mm -hmm. that, that's why you use ga rather than o. Because um, there's always like random exceptions to everything, but that's like by about 90% of the time, you can guess whether or not a verb takes wo, o or ga based off of, was there intent going on here? Did someone decide, aha, I will be doing this. If they did do that, use o, and if they didn't, use ga. So that's why um, we use o miru, because I look, I, I make myself look at something and ga mieru, I happen to see. So that, that's a little example of how o and ga insinuate different things. So with that, you could actually replace any ga object with wa. You can say ringo wa tsuki. This is grammatically correct. Um, if you're in a Japanese class, your teacher will probably mark you wrong for this because they know that's not what you're trying to say. You Because this right here is stressing the apple. If you're doing this, you're making that right. as for apples. I love them. This feels very aggressive with Suki. <laughs> it almost feels mm -hmm. like perhaps you've told like you have a boyfriend, a girlfriend in your case, maybe that you love right. apples. It's your favorite food. You talk about it all the time. And your boyfriend's like, uh, you like um, pineapples, right? You like you like oranges. That's your favorite food. And you are so incredibly right. insulted by this because you've told them 20,000 times that it's apples that you like. That would probably win Ringo wa tsuki would show up to kind of show how annoyed that you are was... that you love apples. And you'd probably add some more like slurring and madness in the sentence, but that'd be the kind of time when you'd see that. So this would be rarer, but you do see wa a lot of times covering over objects to kind of show some kind of stress going on. So this wa I... doesn't just have to go after an object. It can also go after like a location. Can you read the sentence for me? Soko ni wa Hi. So soko ni is literally just I will not allow you to go there. There is soko, iku is to go, and kaseru is to allow. And then it's a knife or not. So I will not allow you to go there. Wa is just adding stress. I will not allow you to go to this specific location. Specifically here. You could go somewhere else. I don't care if you go somewhere else. I'm being very specific here. Mm -hmm. So this is being used over here to be very specific that th no one is on the street. People might be in their houses. That doesn't matter. What matters is that no one's on the street. So they're just being a little bit dramatic with the location because we're reading a book. Yeah, this is just a little opening for how what well, doesn't have to mark a subject. Sometimes it's being dramatic. Um, do you know what a kawa is? Kawa is river. Perfect. And this is the word you saw earlier today, nagareru. You know what nagareru is? Nagareru. It's that something that is... rivers do. Flow. Yeah, rivers flow. So mm. when I was talking about o and ga, what particle do you think we'd use with nagareru for a river? A river that flows. Probably a river that flows because there's no intent. I'm guessing it's or is there correct? Right? Use ga. Um, do you know what this kanji is? 
That is kawa. Perfect. River. So kawa ga nagareru is the default here. It means a river flows. There are other mm. verbs. For example, nagasu is to make something flow. Like majutsushi wa kawa o nagasu. Means the magician makes the river flow. Perhaps he casts a magical spell to make this happen. So o insinuates there's someone being like, hmm, I'll be making this happen. Ga means this family just happened to happen. And this is the pattern you'll see about 90% of the time. As always, there's exceptions to everything in all languages because that's what makes languages fun. So kiri, do you know what kiri meant? Kiri is fog. Perfect. So fogs can also nagareru. What does this mean? Kiri ga nagareru. So the fog flows. Perfect. Um, can you read this sentence for me? Majutsushi no えっと、ポケットから窓席を盗んだ You know what nisumu means? Nisumu. Nisumu. Next plate, Sounds please. Familiar. You're so hungry, you steal someone else's plate. Is nisumu to steal? Mm. Next plate, please. But no, please. My plate now. Um... So nusumu is a steal. What has been stolen? Nusumu majutsushi no poketto. Oh no, it's there. Hi. That is magical rock. Yeah, Dosuki. so the magical rock was stolen. Um, If you don't have a subject, normally you can assume the topic is I. So I stole a magical rock, but literally this could be they stole a ra- ra- magical rock. He did. It could be Pacific, but if you don't know and you don't know how to translate something, you can just make the subject I. Um, that should be fine. So anyway, the grammar on this page is about kara. Kara means from, and this occurs after nouns. It does not occur after clauses. So what is poketto? Is poketto noun? An adjective? A verb? Poketto. Poketto. I, it, poketto is a noun. Yep, it's a noun. So when kata goes after it, we know that it means from. If this right here was like oishi, for example, or or oki, mm. oki, oki, that's an adjective. It's not a noun. So if I said oki kara, that means because it's big. Oki kara madoseki o no sunda. So because it was big, I stole the magical stone. Probably, maybe it looked like expensive or something like that. Takai kara, something like that. So in this mm. case, kara would mean because. Because it's not going after a noun. But since right here, poquito is a noun, Hi. it means what? That is from. Perfect. So what does majutsushi no poquito kara madoseki o no sunda mean? Sunda. Which is to steal magical rock. To steal magical rock from the pocket of a magician. You see right here, we started totally at the end of the sentence. Stole a mm. magical rock from the pocket of a magician. We, did, we, we started totally from the bottom and didn't move anything at all. This is very common. Isn't it? With Sometimes you'll see a, like, a little bit of bouncing around, but in general, you do get this kind of backwards movement in translation in Japanese. Um, how would you say fog flows from the river? So you might think oh, perhaps oh, start oh, over oh. here and go this way mm. when translating. It would be kawa from the river. So karagawa from the river. Fog flows from the river. So it would be fog flows. Kiri no nagareru kara. So, and there would be. why did you decide to attach kiri using no to nagareru? Mm. The fog's flow. That doesn't make sense. Probably should use o. O is a good guess. What would that insinuate if we use o? Who decided that the fog that the... was going to be flowing? Mm. 
There's no one decided it, right? It, this is a natural occurrence. So ga is what we're going to use. Um, ga can be replaced by no in relative clauses, but this isn't a relative mm. clause. So, so if you want to have no here, um, you'd want to have a noun like right here, kiri no nagareru um kawa, which this doesn't make any sense. This is a river that flows of, of um. Yeah, it, 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 you need to have something else there for that to work, um, which we will be seeing like something like that soon. But for now, you don't know that. My God, so to flow. So the river flows. So right here, you have um, from the river, fog flows. Hi. So you're done, actually. Could you move this around and any uh, anything around here around? Do you think my hint is particles? And verbs go at the end of sentences. Hmm. Can I get rid of ka? A bit strange. Um, I'm not sure what you're talking about. You mean the ka right here? Uh, the ka. Right the ga, the particle? She. I would say we mm. should keep... So I have separated this now into what things are glued together. Kiri and ga are glued together. This is called a particle. Particles attach to things, allowing you to move them in other languages. English doesn't have any particles. So in order to convey meaning, we use our sentence structure. The order in which words goes in tells us what is a subject, what is an object, and things like that. In Japanese, they use particles to convey this information, with the one rule being verbs go at the end. So kata from is not actually a I... particle, but it acts as one. It, it it gets attached to something. Same with no. No is also attached, gets attached to something. So this is glued together, this is glued together, and nagare do the verb should go at the end. Mm. So how What's something you can move here? I put them in a little categories. Could we just swap those blocks around? Yes. As long as not gotta do is at the end, we can swap things around. Mm. So kiriga, kawakara, nagare do, and kawakara, kiriga, nagare do. These in English mm. would be the exact same sentence. There is no difference in meaning at all between these two sentences. The reason for this, do you know why? Uh, verbs are at the end, otherwise you can swap them around. Exactly. It's because of particles. Japanese does, mm. to some extent, have a little bit of rules. I would say this one right here is like default. The default form. And if if you delete particles like sometimes you can delete particles Hi. it's going to follow this kind of default kind of rule type of thing but in general you're going to see particles and if there's particles you can move things wherever the heck and who you want to move them as long as the verb it's it's in charge of is behind it so you can't stick another verb over here then that 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 it's a verb skip first come first serve that, that's something to uh remember Okay, so right now is our halfway point. So I'm gonna stop sharing and I'll see you in two seconds.